Good morning, everybody. Day 15. Good job. Congratulations. Um, so today we're going to continue this discussion of STIR, right? This acronym that describes the experience of flow. And uh, the concept is the more we apply this to our memory, the more it's a, you know, sort of a living aspect of our practice. Uh, the easier it will be to recognize when we are in flow and when we are not in flow. And that's a condition to enter flow. We need that positive or that feedback, positive or negative, that we are doing it correctly, whatever it is, basketball, meditating, painting, or doing it incorrectly. So again, knowing the acronym and being sensitive to the experience of flow as it arises specifically um, will give us that feedback. Whatever I'm doing right now, uh, it, it is correct. And so really quick, stir selflessness, timelessness, effortlessness, and richness. And so what this means practically is if you are sitting in meditation and you are constantly thinking about yourself, what you have to do, how you were wronged in this argument or how you were right in this argument, um, you know, the, 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 the trip, the exciting trip you have planned next month, um, positive or negative, if you are constantly thinking about yourself and attached to that, that, that uh, thinking, um, this suggests you're not really entering flow. You're not really absorbed into the now. You're still contained within your own, uh, sort of your own psyche. The second is timelessness. So if you are sitting there meditating and the thoughts of how much time do I have left? How much time is it? What time is it right now? How much time have I been doing this? Um, a fixation with time also suggests you're not entering flow. Uh, effortlessness. So if you're sitting there and there's you know, this, this feeling of, of trying, of striving, and that you're not really you know, in the experience yet. And while that's a necessary part of the learning curve, eventually this constant sense of you're not doing it right or you're not doing it good enough, um, again, suggests one, that you're not entering flow, but the caveat is that you haven't developed agency over the game. Um, so that just means more practice, but it's, it's good to know that eventually you should feel very comfortable and, and understand that the practice is, is wonderfully simple. And the last is richness. If you are not gaining a sense of fullness or satisfaction while in the process of meditating, uh, then again, you're not in flow. And this is an aspect, what we spoke about yesterday, I would argue is the, the most influential condition to entering flow state is you must start to, you must start enjoying the process for the sake of the process that you're not meditating to gain some future peace or to change your character uh, into someone more noble or virtuous or productive in the future. Uh, let the consequences come as they come when that future is your now. But while you are in this now, while you are in this moment, this moment must provide the satisfaction in, in whatever way it presents itself. Uh, so richness, um, and the ability to feel satisfaction from what is arising, whatever it is that you're doing, painting, playing basketball, or meditating, is an important variable to entering flow again. So selflessness, timelessness, effortlessness, and richness, um, again, applying this to our memories should, should foster, should foster um, our skill, our ability. Cool. So with that, we're going to get into our practice um, and just run through these concepts and these descriptions while in the heat of our work. And this should educate us and inform us on how to participate with the subtleties of deep presence in a more sophisticated way. Alrighty, cool. Let's get into a comfortable seated position. Immediately slow down your breath, and we're going to start with a simple exercise. As you breathe in, repeat in your mind, I am aware I am breathing in. And as you breathe out, repeat in the mind, I am aware that I am breathing out. But be careful 
that there isn't this subconscious clause. I'm aware I'm breathing in, so I better get something. Peace, selflessness, timelessness, effortlessness, richness. Look at me. I'm aware I'm breathing in. Give me something back. That's not what the mantra is. All the mantra is helping you do is notice, yes, I am aware I'm breathing in, in the moment I'm breathing in. Yes, I am aware I'm breathing out, in the moment I'm breathing out. Whatever it leads to, it leads to, but I am noticing a simple truth. And my noticing, my awareness, highlighted by this mantra, is also a simple truth. I am only aware of the breath in, not of what it gives, not of where it leads. Because all that's happening now is I'm breathing in and I'm breathing out. Mindfulness is about full absorption into the now, but the now is involved. It is deeply layered. And so as you are aware that you are breathing in, as you are consciously acknowledging you are breathing out, you are also listening. You are also feeling. You are also thinking of other things. But notice all of these rising experiences that together coalesce into the present moment are coming and going. And in this moment of presence, you are deeply aware of all of this coming and going. Some things stay longer, like your breath. Some things are more fleeting, like the sound of a car driving by. If you get nothing else from these 45 days, get this, this simple effort of opening the mind is the key to balancing our nervous systems and in that balancing the ways we interact with the world. So easily overlooked. but so uniquely transformative. So now 20 minutes on your own, 
Everything is permitted in mindfulness. Focus distraction, shifting, opening of the eyes, slow breaths, fast breaths, as long as you are aware that it's happening and that it is impermanent.
notice the coming and going of everything inside and outside. and find joy in this dance. Find satisfaction in the universality of this law. Everything comes and goes.
slow down the breath. Again, noticing the obvious, the strange art of mindfulness. Notice you are paying attention to everything and nothing. Notice you are not hyper fixated. Not like when you're watching a movie. Not like when you're lost and scrolling your phone. Not like when you're immersed in work. The mind is open. Feel that to perpetuate this openness, there is the anti-effort of letting go. A constant releasing And it's from this releasing, this letting go, that we perpetuate openness and we perpetuate flow. So in the closing minutes, slow the breath. And notice, hopefully, you are thinking a little less of yourself and a little more of the now.
selflessness. Feel in this letting go. And try to make it real in this moment. There is less concern with time. Less concern with what's to come. Just a little more emphasis on what is currently arising. Timelessness. Notice in this letting go, especially compared to other duties, taking care of the home, the family, work, that you're just sitting here. It is simple. It is easy. Feel in your letting go the gift of effortlessness. And lastly, in your letting go, a strange richness that comes from connecting to life itself instead of your particular life. A richness that comes from the inescapable wholeness of now. which is different than the sense of dissatisfaction many of us have with our lives because we have goals, we have responsibilities, we have objectives that constantly need to be maintained and achieved. Last few breaths, come back to the beginning of our session. I am aware I am breathing in. I am aware I'm breathing out. Know that it is that simple non-striving awareness, that non-striving noticing, that sparks the letting go and catalyzes the descent into presence and in that feeds the experience of flow. It's a chain of events that comes from noticing. With a breath in, open your eyes.